on Tonkat Ali. I know we've talked about that a little bit before. It's yeah, but I'm guessing as, a number of people probably haven't heard yeah. that conversation. For example, lower carb diets, caloric deficits, you're trying to cut body fat or body weight, then Tonkat is going to be theoretically especially powerful. What sorts of dosages of Tongat do you recommend to your patients? Anywhere from 300 to 1200 milligrams a day. With Tongat, you need to be careful with the standardization because in, if you're thinking about a general Tongat supplement, which is by far the most well-studied, then um, you're looking at the uricominone content, which is a plant compound that is likely the main um, active pharmacologic effect. So that's the compound that's having the effect on the body. And if you standardize the uricominone very, very high, then theoretically you're having more effect at a lower dose. I take 400 milligrams of Tonga Ali um, per day. I take it early in the day because it has a bit of a stimulant effect. And if I take it after 2 p.m., it starts to inhibit my sleep. Um, I've been taking it for years. Um, and uh, I rather like the, the effects. It seems subtle, but you know, consistent. I've never cycled it. Um, do you recommend cycling it? I don't see any reason to cycle it. Um, there is uh, there is a reason to cycle some supplements, but no reason to cycle Tonka. My blood work tells me that it causes an increase in free testosterone for me, and also a slight increase in luteinizing hormone for me. Um, what are some of the other effects on various hormones that you've observed in the blood work of your patients taking Tonga Ali? Tongkat can also slightly increase DHEA. And if you have a very high SHBG, again, that's the protein that binds up your androgens and estrogens, an extremely important protein. Uh, the higher your SHBG, the more it helps decrease it. So they've studied Tongkat in uh, populations with very normal SHBGs, and it does nothing for SHBG. Interesting. Does that mean it does nothing for somebody overall? So if somebody has SHBG that's in the normal range, will taking Tongat benefit them in any other way? Yes. It, it'll increase their total and free testosterone. Got it. Um, okay. Does it, is it known to have effects on anything else like thyroid hormone, growth hormone, or is it purely in these uh, steroid synthesis pathways or steroid, I should say, uh, synthesis and receptor and modulation pathways? There's no direct effect on those pathways. However, anytime you alter your free androgen or free estrogen, uh, particularly one without altering the other, it will alter the binding protein that binds thyroid hormones. So any change you make, whether it's natural optimization or hormone replacement, you're going to slightly skew your thyroid hormone profile. One common like actionable example of this that I see often clinically is um, someone starts, let's say, estrogen replacement or testosterone replacement. Maybe they're taking an AI with their testosterone replacement. Aromatase inhibitor. Correct, an aromatase inhibitor, which blocks the conversion to estrogen. If they're taking testosterone and they have very little estrogen, then you're going to decrease the binding protein, also known as thyroxine binding globulin, which binds active thyroid hormones. So if you start... Uh, TRT and you either have low aromatase activity or no aromatase activity, no conversion to estrogen, then your free thyroid hormones will go up even just acutely. Usually feedback inhibition, which is how the body talks to itself and says, you know, we need to make more of this or less of this. But acutely, there's uh, not always enough time. You're going to have very high thyroid hormones and you can have tachycardia, which is a fast heart rate or you can feel kind of like overly fight or flight due to increased thyroid hormone activity in the end tissue.